In this Cricut tutorial for beginners, I am showing you how you can quickly and easily make much larger cuts than what your Cricut cutting mat can hold. And in the process, we're making a super cute Christmas sign. So let's get crafty. Hey, I'm Michael and this is Mr. Crafty Pants your Cricut and crafting channel, where I post Cricut tips, tricks, and tutorials every single week. So if you are new around here and you're just trying to figure out how to best use your Cricut cutting machine, well, you may want to consider stamping that subscribe button and then ringing that little bell for all the notifications because you, my friend, do not want to miss out on a single Cricut Minute especially during December, because at least around here on this channel, we are doing the 12 days of Craftmas, where not only does that bring you 12 new episodes, 12 new Cricut Christmas or holiday themed projects, but it also brings you 12 new chances to get registered to win a huge Cricut prize package. Because not only am I giving away a Cricut maker, but I'm also giving away a Cricut Joy with the hopes that you'll spread some love and kindness and good cheer and give away one of those Cricut cutting machines to a friend or to a family member. On top of that, I'm also giving away a huge bundle of the StarCraft HD permanent adhesive vinyl, a 30 foot roll of the transfer tape, my favorite weeding tool and some other little goodies as well. Now to get registered to win, all you have to do is watch these videos from the very beginning all the way up until the very end because hidden inside of each of these videos is a holiday or Christmas themed phrase. But here's the thing, these phrases will be popping up one word at a time. They look a little something like this right here. And so whenever you see something like that, just jot it down, keep watching all the way up until the end of the video. And by the time the video is over, you'll have a full Cricut Christmas holiday themed phrase. From there, just text that into me if you are in the United States to 502-878-7189. If you're outside of the United States, just email that to me at mcpgiveaways at gmail.com. All right, so now on to today's project, which I am so excited for per usual. And that is because I'm showing you all how to do larger than matte cuts, how to cut out a huge design onto a larger surface, but with just a regular Cricut cutting machine. Now, here's the thing. Y'all already know that I specialize in Cricut cutting machines, but truth be told, you can do this with any type of cutting machine as long as it can work with SVG cut files. Now I am going to be using my Cricut Maker because it is already out here on the desk, but you can also do this with a Cricut Joy or with a Cricut Explore Air 2 or with a Brother Scan and Cut or a Silhouette Cameo. You get the idea. I'm also going to be using some permanent adhesive vinyl. And again, my favorite permanent adhesive vinyl is the StarCraft HD. This stuff is amazing. It's affordable. All of the colors come in both matte and glossy finishes. It weeds like a dream. Like I just love this stuff through and through. And you can get a five foot roll of this stuff for $2.85. Yeah, that's crazy. I will have all this stuff linked for you all down in that description box below. And I will also include some promo codes that you can use on top of this already insane price because why not? <laughs> We're also gonna need a surface to apply all this stuff too, right? And I'm gonna be using a chalkboard today. And I actually found this chalkboard at the Goodwill. And this was just like, I think four, five, six dollars somewhere in that general vicinity of a price range. But I'll be applying my design to this huge thing right here. I'm also gonna be using some parchment paper, which may sound really crazy to some of you all, but I promise you, this is a life changing Cricut hack that you all definitely, definitely need to know. And last but not least, we're also gonna need an SVG cut file to make this Cricut Christmas magic happen. So per usual, I'm gonna hop over to designbundles.net and I'll show you the one that I'm using for today. And this is the SVG file right here that I'm gonna be using for today's project. I just love this design, you guys. Like through and through, I love this design. I have seen so many signs being sold online similar to this for just crazy amounts of money. And the fact that I wanna create something somewhat similar to this for, gosh, I mean, less than $10, it's just insane to me. I love, love, love this, which makes me just love my Cricut cutting machine even more. 
but let's take a look through some of these. And this look right here is kind of what I'm wanting to kind of go towards, a kind of like that chalkboard vibe right here. So, which is why I'm applying our design in white vinyl to our chalkboard. So let's go ahead and hop over to Cricut Design Space and we'll get started on this project. All right, so here we are on the Cricut Design Space canvas. And I just wanted to show you real quick that this file does come with both types of SVG files. So it does come one with the different colors if you wanna go that route. And it also comes one with a solid color as well if you wanna go that route as well. But um, I'm actually gonna be deleting out this version right here by clicking this little red X and be using this file instead. So let's take a look over here real quick at the right hand side of the page in the layers panel, because as you can see here, there are multiple layers to this, which is perfectly fine. There's not all that many at all. But since I am gonna have to slice this image up somewhat to fit onto our larger surface, I'm gonna go ahead and weld this into one solid image or one solid layer. And the way I'm gonna do that is to just make sure that it's all selected, which it is. And then I'm gonna come down here towards the bottom right hand corner and select weld. And weld does what it sounds like it's gonna do. It's gonna weld or merge or fuse all those layers into one solid image, just like so. All right, so really what we have to do next is actually resize this to fit onto our surface. Now, if you've been around on this channel for really any length of time, then you probably already know that I love creating templates and this is no exception whatsoever. I'm gonna create a template that's gonna be the exact size as our surface that we're applying our design to. That way we know exactly how big to make our design. So to do that, I'm actually gonna come over here to the left-hand side of the page. I'm gonna click on shapes and I'm gonna open up a square. There we go. And now we just need to resize the square to be the exact dimensions as our surface. So for this chalkboard, the width of this is 28 inches wide and the height is 18 inches. Now this is counting just the chalkboard itself. It's not counting the actual frame because well, our design is not gonna be touching the frame at all. But what we're gonna do is plug in the numbers for the actual black chalkboard and then we can go about resizing our design on top of that. All right, so I'm gonna come up here towards the top of the canvas, right up here where it says size. And this little padlock right here basically locks in the proportions of our square. So we can't really change the height without it automatically changing the width as well. Well, since we obviously have a different measurement for the width and the height, we need to go ahead and unlock that little padlock. And then from there, we can go ahead and put in the width at 28 for 28 inches, hit enter. And then for the height, we can go in here and put in there 18, hit enter. And there we go. We can go ahead and lock the little padlock back if you'd like to. And I am now gonna actually right click our design and then select send it back. And as far as our image goes, it's a little difficult to see on our template. So I'm gonna go ahead and change the color by coming up here towards the top left hand corner, clicking on that little color swatch and then just changing that color to white. So obviously this template is a little bit too big for our screens. So I'm gonna come down here towards the bottom left hand corner and then just zoom out a little bit and I can now click our image and then just grab this little resize handle right here and then just drag this outwards like so. All right, so I think that that size onto that template actually looks really, really good. So we don't really need that template anymore. So let me go ahead and click that template and then come up here towards the top left-hand corner and click that little red X like so. All right, so now it's kind of somewhat difficult to actually see our design onto our canvas because it's white on white, right? now. Y'all, I just found out this little hack today. I don't know where I've been, but I am obsessed with this. Some people know it. It seems like a lot of people don't. So I'm gonna go ahead and share it with all of you guys. And that is totally in thanks to Michelle Zanizer. She is a moderator in my Cricut Crafting Community Facebook group. And I am so extremely grateful that she decided to share this because again, my mind is blown. And it's all about actually changing the color of your canvas background. I'm obsessed. So to do that, all you have to do is come down here towards the bottom right hand corner, click where it says blank canvas, and then you can come up here towards the top of the canvas, right up here where it says color. I can change that and I can put in here a darker gray color, whatever we want really, just so we can see our image just a little bit better. That is just so cool in my opinion, I love this. Now obviously this, this canvas is pretty busy. Um, so I'm actually gonna come up here towards the top left hand corner these little measurements, these little rulers meet, there's this little square right here in the corner. You can go ahead and click that and it actually reduces the, the number of lines in that grid. And you can click it again if you want to, to actually remove all the lines in that grid. So there we go. I mean, again, I know that some people already know this. Personally, I'll just be honest, I did not have a freaking clue. So 
Thank you, Michelle. By the way, everybody let Michelle know just how thankful you are down in the comment section below, because if you're like me and this is blowing your mind, we need to show some gratitude, right? <laughs> All right, so basically what we have to do now is slice this image up so that it can fit onto a Cricut cutting mat. Now, Cricut makes two sizes of cutting mats. They make a 12 inch by 12 inch version, and they also make a 12 inch by 24 inch version. I know that some people have the 12 inch by 24 inch version, but not everyone, obviously. And I want this, I want this tutorial to be as universal as possible. So I'm gonna show you all how to do this with the 12 inch by 12 inch version. You all can still do this with a 12 inch by 24 inch cutting mat. You just have to make some very minor little tweaks. But first things first, I'm gonna come over here to the left-hand side of the page and I'm gonna create a template for our cutting mat. So I'm gonna click on shapes and I'm gonna open up a square. And let's go ahead and change the color of the square so that it actually resembles our cutting mat. So I'll come up here towards the top left hand corner, click that little color swatch and we'll just change this to green. All right, so for our 12 inch by 12 inch cutting mat, even though it is a 12 inch by 12 inch cutting mat, the maximum cutting size on that is 11 and a half inches by 11 and a half inches. The maximum cutting size for a 12 inch by 24 inch cutting mat is 11 and a half inches by 23 and a half inches. So for this cutting mat right here, the template for it is not gonna be 12 inches by 12 inches. It's instead gonna be 11 and a half inches by 11 and a half inches. How many times can I say inches in one video? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> But I'm gonna come up here towards the top of the canvas, right up here where it says size. And I'm gonna leave that little padlock locked because the measurement's gonna be the same for the width and the height. And I'm gonna change that out to 11.5, hit enter, and there we go. All right, so I can already tell you that I'm gonna need at least four cutting mats. So I'm gonna go ahead and right click our little template here and select duplicate. And I'm actually gonna move our design down here out of the way. And I'm gonna come down here towards the bottom left hand corner, zoom in and then just scoot these little mats a little bit closer. And we just wanna make sure that it's completely even all the way across. All right, so I think that that looks pretty good. So let me zoom back out a little bit. And I'm gonna click and drag over both of these mats and then right click it and then select to duplicate. And these I'm actually gonna line up right below these other two. And I'm gonna zoom back in. All right, so I think that that is pretty good. So I'm gonna come back down here and zoom back out. And I'm gonna right click our design down here and then select send to front, just like so. And what I like to do is always find this little cross or this little plus sign right here in the center of our design. And I'll line that right up here, smack dab in the middle of all four of our cutting mats, just so we can make sure that we have an equal amount of our design onto each cutting mat. All right, so that looks pretty much perfect in my book anyway. So what we need to do now is basically slice up this image or this design into four equal parts so that we can then cut it out onto four Cricut cutting mats or really the same cutting mats four times over and then piece it together onto our surface. So to do that, I wanna come over here, make sure that our design is selected and then holding down my shift key, I'm gonna select this little green square or the screen template behind it like so. I'm then gonna come down here towards the bottom right hand corner and select slice. So real quick, let's say you're doing this at home and you go to slice and that slice option is not there. It's grayed out and you can't select it. That means one of two things. It either means that you only have one layer selected or it means that you have three or more layers selected. Slice is only available if you have two layers selected which is why I actually had to weld my design earlier in this video. I had to weld it to make one solid layer, one solid image, so that we can then go about slicing it like we are now. All right, so now I'm going to select our design over the second mat, this top right hand corner, and then holding on my shift key, I'm gonna select that mat right behind it, and then come down here towards the bottom right hand corner and select slice yet again. All right, again, I wanna come down here and select our design right over this bottom left-hand square. And then holding down my shift key, I'm gonna select the square behind it, and then come down here towards the bottom right-hand corner and select slice. Just by default, essentially, this last little section right here is already sliced out since we already sliced out the other three, and we are good to go. So let me go ahead and click on these little green mats. And I'm gonna go ahead and delete all those out just like so. So basically just by moving away the different sections of our design, we're finding the leftover remnants of what we sliced out of those green templates. Basically just as we see them, we go ahead and just delete them out, just like so. All right, so now we are all done with that. So now let's come up here towards the top right hand corner and select make it. 
All right, so as we can see here, here is our image sliced up onto four different cutting mats. So let's go ahead and come down here towards the bottom right hand corner and select continue. Now, if you are doing this with the 12 inch by 24 inch cutting mats, you basically do all of the same things that I just did, except for with a template that is 11 and a half inches by 23 and a half inches instead of the 11 and a half inches by 11 and a half inches. All right, so I am using StarCraft HD permanent adhesive vinyl. So I'm gonna come over here and select browse all materials. And if you don't see this page and you're using a Cricut Explorer device, just turn your dial over to custom and then all this should pop up for you. So I'm select browse all materials and then just do a search for premium. I'm gonna select premium vinyl and select done. And now I'm gonna go ahead and load our cutting mats and get started cutting. Now, whenever I'm removing my vinyl from my cutting mat, what I like to do is flip my mat over and peel my mat away from the vinyl instead of the other way around. That just helps prevent any damage from occurring to our material. And while that's cutting out, I'm gonna go ahead and start weeding out my design. All right, so now for applying this to our surface with the help of parchment paper. If you've been around on my channel, you probably already know this little tip, trick, or hack, whatever you wanna call it. But if you have not yet seen this, you're about to be in for a huge treat because this will completely change not only how you actually apply vinyl to a surface, but also how you layer vinyl as well. It's just all around an absolute game changer. So I'm gonna go ahead and actually grab a little sheet of this parchment paper right here. And I'm also gonna grab some transfer tape and oh my gosh, I just realized that yet again, I completely forgot to mention transfer tape at the beginning of this video with the materials that I'll be using. So, so sorry for that. I don't even know why I forget about this because it is literally one of my most favorite things ever, like right next to StarCraft HD. It's amazing. But I'm gonna go ahead and just peel off a sheet of this and we'll start applying it to our vinyl. And I am just unrolling this with the sticky side facing up and I'm gonna go ahead and grab my first sheet of vinyl right here. And what I like to do is actually apply this or lay this down face down onto the sticky side of the transfer tape. You don't have to do it this way. Just to me, I feel like it's, it's just a little bit easier. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab my scissors and then just cut this off. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and set this to the side and apply another sheet of this transfer tape to another sheet of vinyl. And I normally would not do that, especially with this transfer tape, because this stuff you can use over and over and over and over again. However, I really wanna make sure that I lay this all out onto my surface and have it all be centered and all look good and all the good things, right? And to me, this is just the easiest way to go about doing this, but don't worry, I will still be reusing each sheet of transfer tape multiple times in the future over and over and over again. I like to save those until I just can't use them anymore. All right, so now I'm gonna go back through and just squeegee down each of my sheets of vinyl. Just squeegee the transfer tape down to each section of vinyl. All right, so now I'm now gonna go through and flip these over and then peel the backing paper off of the vinyl and the transfer tape. And I'm now gonna replace that backing paper with some parchment paper. All right, so now using parchment paper as a barrier between our vinyl and our surface, just to make sure that we can line everything up perfectly before we actually adhere it to the surface, I'm gonna just lay all this out just so I can make sure everything is centered and laid out perfectly on our surface before we actually go about adhering any of it.
All right, so everything is pretty much laid out the way that it should be going on our surface anyway. However, I'm seeing that it's not perfectly centered. So now I'm just gonna kind of just rearrange everything until I get it perfectly centered on our surface. All right, so I pretty much have everything laid out exactly where I want it to go on the surface. Everything's pretty much centered. <laughs> And so this one is gonna be the first one that I actually lay down or the first one that I actually apply to my surface. So for that, I am basically just lifting up on my vinyl, taking my parchment paper below it and just like folding it back. And I'm gonna grab my squeegee tool right here and then just start to slowly burnish this down to the chalkboard surface below it. All right, so now that that is down, I can kind of now just like flip it and like lift up the other end. We'll pull up the transfer tape and I'm actually gonna pull out all together the parchment paper. And now with the squeegee tool again, I'm gonna use the squeegee tool to push and apply everything down to the surface. And while we're doing that, we're basically gonna be eliminating most, if not all of the air bubbles as well. All right, so now that we have the top two sections done, I can go ahead and put these back in and line them up with the top sections. All right, so now that the parchment paper is gone, I can go ahead and squeegee this down. It's safe to say that I am obsessed with this. Now, if you all like today's episode or if you learned something new, it would honestly mean the absolute world to me and help me out so much here on YouTube. If you took two seconds to stamp that like button as well as drop a comment down in that comment section below. Also, while you're at it, if you are new around here and just trying to figure out how to best use your Cricut cutting machine, well, you may wanna consider stamping that subscribe button and then ringing that little small bell for all the notifications because I put out new Cricut tips, tricks, and tutorials every single week and you do not want to miss out on a single cricket minute especially during december because like i said earlier well during december around here on this channel it is the 12 days of craftmas so at this point in the video you should have all of the words that create that hidden holiday or christmas themed phrase and if you are in the u.s all you have to do is text that into me at 502-878-7189 or if you're outside of the u.s email it to me at mcpgiveaways at gmail.com thank you all so 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 much for watching today's episode it truly 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 means the world to me and i am so extremely grateful for each and every single one of you all and until next time stay crafty